changed. We had two days of beautiful sunshine, 30 degrees, dry, and the last two days have been wet, moist, <laughs> rainy, cloudy. Classic Pacific Northwest. Classic Pacific Northwest. But this is what I imagine a fjord to be like all of the time. And it's interesting, some of the waterfalls that weren't running when we got here are now pouring water just from one night of rain. We haven't seen rain in two months, so That's crazy. it's been really nice. It's kind of a nice change. We're wearing sweaters with boar shorts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a good combination. It's really awesome to experience both sides of this fjord. It's like pretty well classic Pacific Northwest up here. The trees, the fog, the light drizzle. I love it. I really enjoy being dry, but this is more beautiful. It's just so moody. It makes you want to turn on the wood stove, make a stew, cozy yeah. down in the galley. I like the atmosphere, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's really hard to describe. You gotta come experience it. Time has come for us to leave Princess Louisa Inlet for a couple of reasons. Our holding tank is full and you can't dump up here. We're pretty well out of electricity on our house battery. We're running out of food. We've run out of ice. The box of wine is empty. So for all the set above reasons, I think it is time for us to hit the high sea. Slack tide today is at 12.17, which is in about an hour and a half. And we have one obstacle to overcome in the meantime, which is the question of, with our battery bank being so low, will our engine start? Hopefully it will. We've exclusively been using the house battery and the cranking battery still has good voltage on it. Fingers crossed that she turns over. be really nervous for a second. I really didn't think it was going to go. Ooh. You can hear the starter start to wind down. Yeah. You only get a few tries, hey? You do when she's that low. Just let her warm up before we increase it too much. Yay! <laughs> 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 Forty-eight hours and seventy-five nautical miles later, 
we were back in the Strait of Georgia, sailing in 20 knot winds and surfing down six to eight foot swells, when our steering failed. Emergency tiller on because we're now in an emergency. James was at the helm the moment everything let go and our boat was solely at the mercy of the wind. What we didn't capture on camera were the initial moments of complete panic, having seemingly lost control of our boat. James quickly pulled the emergency tiller out of the lazarette and jammed it on the rudder post. With the tiller installed, we immediately regained control of our vessel and prevented a crash dive. I'll try to keep us as steady as we can, okay? Steering with the emergency tiller for the first time took some getting used to, since it was opposite to steering with a wheel. Simply put, to steer the boat to starboard, we had to move the tiller to port and vice versa. And this took a little mental flossing. After a few uncomfortable moments of learning under pressure, we both got the hang of handling the boat with the tiller, and we were cruising under control again. Luckily, the wind system is moving north of us, kind of leaving us more in yellow. It's actually simmered down quite a bit now. Yeah, since it broke, it really has. So yeah. that, thank you, thank universe. You. universe. Take good care of us. Feeling pretty good now. I feel like the wind is definitely. Oh. We've gotten a, way closer to shore. Yeah. And it's definitely gusting out there, but in here. Oh. Concentrate on what you're doing, James. Ah. It's fine again. <laughs> yeah, so as long as we pay attention to what we're doing, um, it's all good, right? Yeah. But yeah, being closer to shore, the wind isn't quite as bad as it is out over there. The way I predict wind tells us it is red and blowing in the 20s. Low 20s. 
but I think we're a little bit safer out here. One reef in the main, Genoa filled away for safety. Look, I'm really getting my workout today. It's, it's actually more arms than you think. I now understand why the sailing flies on the YouTube channels have muscles. It's sweaty in this life jacket. <laughs> I'm keeping it on. We noticed that compared to the wheel, we actually had a better feel for the boat using the tiller. Small gentle adjustments kept the wind in our sails and our boat on course. just 15 nautical miles from the nearest port, so rather than attempt to make repairs underway, we adjusted our sails and set course for Powell River. Our boat, Uinta, is helmed by a common Edison steering system, where a radial drive mounted on the rudder post is controlled by the steering wheel via a cable and chain linkage. Well, that was the other end of it. When we opened up our pedestal, we found the broken end of the wire linkage stuck up inside the steering column. On closer inspection, it was evident that this was not the first time the cable had broken as the starboard cable was held together with cable clamp connectors. It was clear this was the point of failure in our steering. The correct course of action would be to replace the entire chain wire linkage and eliminate the broken wires. I just pulled the cable out from inside of the transom, I guess, is what we're going to call that. It looks like it's connected in two parts here to the steering cable that runs up the column and I think we just have to reconnect it and it all should be good. Which would mean that we were stuck in a foreign port waiting for delivery of parts. We made temporary repairs using the spares and tools we had available, loosening the tensioning nuts on the radial drive, then reconnected the cables using the cable clamps and retensioned the whole steering system. Our steering is back together. It's a good feeling to finally have it done. I think we did an okay job. Everything's tightened back up and the wheel feels nice and responsive with the movement of the tiller. We were previously using this spoke, but this spoke is our new center point. We can put this trusty handsome devil back where he belongs until next time when this guy gives up the ghost. Hopefully that will be after this season <laughs> so we don't have to do this job twice this year. Put it away for now. I'm sure we'll need it again. Until next time. Do we want to put a better cord on that? I think so. Just clean it up and make it simpler for now. Okay. Because yeah, there's a better way to do this. <laughs> we'll take seconds off of our installation time, although we got that thing on in like under a minute. That's true, <laughs> but it could be 30 seconds next time. And right. That's what we need to focus on. Right. We learned a great deal from this experience and have added a little extra redundancy to our steering failure preparedness plan. It is important to note that we had an insidious yellow tubular fruit on board, and if left to its own devices, it would have surely sank our boat. Thanks for watching, folks. Join us next episode as we sail to beautiful Desolation Sound. Until then, stay safe and stay afloat.